Losing fat is difficult. When you lose weight, your body's metabolism slows down and your hormones responsible for hunger often increase. The good news is that hunger can be fought. Here are the best foods to lose weight and keep it off. Welcome back, Dr. Milo Wolf with you today, PhD in sports science, Wolf Coaching, you know the deal. I have gone through numerous fat loss phases. I've competed in bodybuilding and I've also got a degree in sports science. With all of that in mind, let me give you what I think are the best foods for fat loss. A big part of bodybuilding and weight loss in general, when you're cutting down to become leaner, lose fat, etc., is to stay full enough that you don't feel like going over your daily calories. Ultimately, for fat loss, being in a calorie deficit is what matters. But staying sufficiently full throughout the day can make that a little bit easier. I'm going to give you a great analogy here, so stay with me for a second. Being full during a cut is kind of like post-nut clarity, which, by the way, women do get too. When you're experiencing post-nut clarity, you may not have much interest in any physical intimacy anymore. Much like the same way, if you're super full, even the tastiest food doesn't really seem that appealing anymore. Yes, this sports scientist just compared post-nut clarity to being full during a cut. But you get the idea. If you're sufficiently satiated, really palatable foods that can cause you to overeat in terms of calories become less appealing. So here's the deal. When you're in a calorie deficit and you've been losing weight and fat for a while, your body makes you hungrier. And so what we look for in good foods during a cut is that they obviously help you to retain muscle mass, have an adequate amount of protein in them, but the main thing is just to satiate you and generally contribute to good health. Here's a checklist of what likely makes a food more satiating and filling and beneficial to eat during weight loss phase. First, and this is kind of obvious, but the foods that we consume should have a low energy density or just have a lot of volume per calorie consumed. Guess what? All else being equal, if you have a spoonful of food or if you have a huge plate of food, the huge plate of food is going to make you more satiated, even if they contain the same calories. And there's actually been quite a bit of research on this. So when you see people eating salads, for example, that have a ton of volume during a weight loss phase, they're probably onto something. And in fact, there's a huge area of research centered around energy density when it comes to weight loss. And that body of evidence was recently reviewed by Close and colleagues where they reviewed 38 studies on the topic of energy density and how it impacts things like hunger and energy intake when participants are just left to their own devices as far as how much they want to eat. Just by reducing energy density, aka how much volume of food you get per calorie, people ended up consuming 220 fewer calories when eating foods that were less dense in energy. So when left to their own devices, why did people consume fewer calories when consuming less energy dense food? Well, as it turns out, there's a variety of mechanisms responsible for inducing satiety, that feeling of being full and not wanting to eat further food. One of them is gastric satiation, and gastric satiation is volumetric. Specifically, when you consume a lot of food in terms of volume, mechanical distension of the stomach may occur. Since the stomach is densely innervated, that can then result in gastric satiation. Conversely though, there are other types of satiation. For example, intestinal satiation seems to be more so mediated by the nutrient content of the food you consume. For example, a certain combination of macronutrients can be more productive when it comes to intestinal satiation. But at the very least, when you reduce energy density and you consume more volume of food, that reduces ad libitum energy intake and likely has something to do with gastric satiation. The next factor on the checklist would be fiber content. Now, generally, a high fiber content also goes hand in hand with a low energy density and many other things that are good for promoting satiation during weight loss phase. For example, foods that are higher in fiber generally are also a little bit less palatable, aka less pleasurable to eat, so you're less likely to overconsume them and end up negating your calorie deficit. We'll come back to palatability as a factor in food selection during weight loss phase. But in the meantime, we have a systematic review by Clark and colleagues looking at the impact of fiber intake on satiation and hunger. They reviewed 44 studies studying the impact of fiber intake on subsequent satiation, hunger, fullness, etc. To make a long story short, around 40% of those studies found a benefit on appetite. Only around 20% of the studies reviewed found a significant benefit as far as energy intake went, so how many calories people consumed when they consumed more or less fiber. Importantly though, when you zoom out from this specific systematic review and you also look at epidemiological logical data, then you notice that generally people who consume more fiber also have lower body weights. Now, I'm not claiming this is causation and that fiber is a huge factor in making you lose body weight, but when you consider this research on hunger and potentially reducing energy intake, plus you add to the equation that oftentimes foods high in fiber also have low palatability, a low energy density, and have health benefits via macronutrients and so forth, good stuff tends to happen when you consume more foods that are higher in fiber within your diet 
especially during weight loss phase. Next up is a smaller factor that may play a small role, and that's the texture of your food. Generally, foods with a chewier texture or with a more toothsome texture are going to satiate you more than foods that are liquid. This likely has more to do with rate of eating. The faster you eat something typically, the less it's going to satiate you, all else being equal, but it is worth keeping in mind. For example, one meta-analysis of 29 studies that equated for the weight of the food consumed and or the calories consumed found the following. On a scale of 0 to 100, with appetite ratings reflecting a variety of aspects of appetite, generally, solid and viscous foods reduced appetite by about 5 points or so out of 100 compared to more liquid foods. You can drink 300 calories a lot faster than you can eat 300 calories, typically. Next up, we have protein content of the food. Now, first, protein content has a higher thermic effect of feeding per gram than any other macronutrient, meaning that when you consume a gram of protein, your body expends more energy to digest it and metabolize it compared to other macronutrients like carbohydrates or fats. This means that of all the macronutrients in your diet, it actually has the lowest energy density as far as weight is concerned, which, as I mentioned earlier in the video, is probably a good thing when it comes to weight loss. However, your calorie intake across the day when you're dieting is kind of like a budget for a trip, right? You could spend all your money at the strip house and then have no money left for the rest of the trip, or you could spend it more sensibly. And so, just like with your money on a trip, your calorie should be spent sensibly. And you have to make the decision of do you spend your calories on more fiber-heavy foods or on more protein-heavy foods. Generally, fiber sources are going to be a slightly better choice in my view for satiation. When it comes to pure satiation, I would typically recommend foods higher in fiber versus higher in protein. They're generally a little bit less palatable or pleasurable to eat, making it less likely for you to overconsume them. They generally have a lower energy density, meaning you get more satiated from them. And finally, they have a slightly more toothsome or chewier texture, and it generally just takes a little bit longer to consume them. So, all else being equal, I think fiber sources will generally be more satiating than protein sources. However, protein doesn't just have the benefit of having a lower energy density. It also potentially has other benefits. So, here I am shilling for big fiber. However, protein intake also has some pretty strong evidence behind it, as far as promoting weight loss. For instance, here's what a review paper by Heather and colleagues found. In interventions lasting less than a year, increasing protein intake has a modest benefit on losing body weight. And even in interventions lasting more than a year, there is still a modest benefit to be had of increasing protein intake as far as long-term weight loss or weight loss maintenance, essentially helping you keep that weight off after you've lost it. Importantly though, putting aside its potential weight loss benefits and satiation benefits, there is also the more important benefit of protein intake being important for maximizing muscle mass gains and muscle mass retention while you're losing fat. Ultimately, for most people, you're looking to lose fat and not just any weight, like muscle mass. You're looking partly for the aesthetic benefits of losing fat. If that's the case, increasing protein intake to about 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day is going to be a good thing to do. Not only will it help you retain more muscle, it'll also keep you fuller, and it's generally a good thing when it comes to losing weight. Next up, we have the palatability factor that I mentioned earlier in the video. We actually have a review paper by Sorensen and colleagues looking at exactly the impact of palatability on energy intake and hunger. Interestingly, more palatable, pleasurable foods, like a lot of energy-dense foods that you consume in your diet, didn't satiate people more. They had inconsistent effects when it came to appetite. However, they also found that studies measuring energy intake as participants consumed either more palatable foods or less palatable foods, that when a meal was delicious or really pleasurable to consume, people ate more. Basically, as a food was tastier and more palatable, the consumption of that food and overall energy intake increased, no matter what the subjective perception of appetite, etc. was within these studies. So not only might consuming more palatable foods, like more energy-dense foods and pleasurable foods to eat, not make you any fuller than less palatable foods, they also seem to just make you consume more overall calories. So it's a double whammy of not benefiting your hunger that much, and also making you consume more total calories. Those aren't the main factors I would pay attention to when selecting foods within my diet, especially if I'm struggling with hunger. These factors are going to be the main ones when it comes to making sure that you stay full during your diet, making it easier for you to lose fat. Here's a random side note that I found beneficial during my diets from a purely anecdotal perspective. I'm not recommending anyone necessarily do this but I wanted to mention it anyways because I found it to be the case during my diets. Personally, fat-free dairy products, it might be because I'm slightly lactose intolerant or what have you, satiate me quite well. When you specifically opt for fat-free versions of dairy products like yogurt and what have you, generally their energy density is relatively low, they have a relatively high protein intake, and I just find that they make me slightly nauseated. 
you can't be over consuming calories if you're about to shit yourself. But the research on this topic is pretty equivocal, so take this with a grain of salt and a large glass of alternative milk. So think about all these factors that I mentioned in the checklist when you select which foods to eat and select a variety of food sources. Now I'm gonna mention a few foods and illustrate why they are satiating, just so you have an idea of what potentially to consume. But equally, don't let me dictate what foods you eat. I am not your parent, and I don't want to be a parent yet. Without further ado, sports science doctor reveals shocking foods that may help you lose fat. First, we have fruits. Shocking. Apples are fine, pineapple is fine. With apples, for example, you have the chewy texture, you have the low energy density, you have the high fiber content, all things that likely help you when it comes to promoting satiation and helping you lose fat. Next up, we have vegetables. For example, salads. I know, even more shocking. Salads have a low energy density, aka few calories per each bite. They have a lot of fiber. They're not super palatable unless you make them. Then you also have legumes and beans like chickpeas, for example, which have a high fiber content, a decent amount of protein, have a relatively toothsome texture. The list goes on. And finally, any lean meats or relatively lean protein sources, aka things that mostly contain protein and not much else. For example, lean meats have a decent amount of volume, they help with muscle mass retention, protein is relatively satiating. I know, all of this is very shocking. Vegetables? Fruits? Legumes, beans, pulses? And lean meats? And generally just good protein sources? These things can help you lose fat? Shocking, I know. But consuming more of these within your diet will help you stay fuller, potentially have health benefits via increased fiber intake, increased micronutrient diversity, and so forth. But whenever you're struggling with hunger within your diet, just keep these factors in mind and see which foods might help you stay fuller and successfully lose weight and keep it off. That has been the video. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. If you want to see me cover any other topics within the nutrition realm, leave a comment down below letting me know what you want to see. Do you want me to coach you? Check out the link above and that can become a thing. Now I hear you saying, Milo, I don't have the cash to hire you as a coach. And that's totally understandable. If you're looking instead for a much cheaper option, we do have an app coming out soon that will handle all of the training for you. I can confidently say that currently on the market, there is nothing else like it. So if you want to stay in the loop with MyOdapt, check out myodapt.com. Have a fantastic day, and I will see you guys next time. Peace. Jesus fucking Christ, I will shoot whoever's at the door now. Except we don't have guns. This is the UK. I have no idea what the fuck the special delivery is for. Is it a bomb? Am I being bombed? Who knows? That sounded very important. I'm not sure I trust it. IRS and HMRC is sending me bombs right now. They can't take all this tax evasion I've been committing. Not actually. Don't come after me.